What's going on in San Francisco? It's a question you've likely heard no matter where in the U.S. you live. In the age of viral videos and politicized media, San Fran has become a symbol for pundits and politicians who are looking to score points for their team. In California, a pack of thieves flees with armfuls of stolen merchandise. There has been another smash and grab robbery at a jewelry store. It's happened again. Four women run off after stealing from the CVS pharmacy. When they see these things go viral, the perception of lawlessness, the perception that anything goes, really, that has to be overcome too. The viral videos of people going into retail stores and just wiping contents off shelves into garbage bags and, and running out, those leave lasting impressions on people. People have no idea that these disparities are there. They can't wrap their brains around why would people steal that way in San Francisco. So why is the media so fixated on San Francisco? San Francisco's problems aren't all that different from other major metros, but the city by the bay occupies a unique space in the identity of the U.S., which is why so many pundits tend to pick on it. I think you can trace that ideology all the way back to California and its mythology as this place of opportunity. This is Aliyah Dun Salahuddin, a historian and educator at Stanford University. San Francisco's always had this mythology of being this future, forward, progressive city. Its history really reflects much of that of the country, and it's been a struggle for many groups to maintain place here. You have these myriad movements, whether they be the gay liberation movement, the free speech movement, the movement for ethnic studies, the black power movement, the black arts movement, all of which are happening here. A lot of that 60s and 70s movements really, I, I think, are what cemented that image. But the rights of the disenfranchised have historically always been undercut and challenged by a very powerful and limited group of people who have different interests. Critics calling for crackdowns don't realize that the challenges facing San Francisco are far too big to be solved with more policing and prosecution. Many experts suggest that the real challenge facing San Francisco isn't crime, but rather the income inequality that exists within the city. San Francisco has changed. Like in the last 10, 20 years, the way that housing has worked, access, the cost of living here is absurd. The thing that is drastic in San Francisco is the amount of wealth that exists here versus the poverty. It's a very paradoxical city and always has been. You can have on one corner, a very nice, affluent, six dollar lattes, cafes, you turn the corner and then there are people who are openly using drugs, suffering from a myriad of issues and people have become conditioned to that. According to a study that looked at census surveys from 2013 to 2020, the richest households in San Francisco made nearly 11 times more money than the city's poorest. That disparity was even worse among marginalized communities. Black and Latine people in San Francisco make up 45% of very low-income families, but only 13% of high-income families. In fact, more than two-thirds of Black families and nearly three-quarters of Latine families in the city are considered low or very low income. This inequality has left a mark on the city and the people who call it home. We're 49 square miles, 850,000 population, but we have anywhere from eight to 10,000 homeless population and an estimated 30 to 40% of those people have some sort of mental illness. These are the consequences of investing, not in the people who made the city, but investing um, in capital without really thinking about the, the aftermath and the effect. Part of the policies and things that come into play, whether it's in San Francisco or the United States, are based on a war on drugs that decriminalizes people and doesn't actually listen to people who use drugs. The current systems in place in the U.S. punish the most vulnerable, deprive them of resources, or ignore their pain entirely. But over the last few decades, San Francisco has become a breeding ground for innovative new solutions that address problems with empathy and care. Trauma recovery centers, which help survivors of violent crime live with resulting mental health conditions like depression and post-traumatic stress disorder, are one such solution. One of the first centers was opened at the University of California, San Francisco in 2001, though it quickly spread throughout California and into other states like Ohio and Illinois. San Francisco is also home to pioneering organizations like the Drug Overdose Prevention and Education Project, aka the DOPE Project. Through the work of people like DOPE Project Manager Andrea Fuguera, 
The organization aims to destigmatize drug use and give compassionate care to people who use drugs. People who use drugs, harm reduction workers, healthcare workers, they organize together in the 90s to be able to make their labs accessible to their communities, to be like, how do we prevent the heroin overdoses that were happening at the time and stop our community from dying? And that slowly became the DOC project. The naloxone is basically an antidote to opiate overdoses. Our priority is to provide naloxone directly to the hands of people who use drugs and to communities that are mostly disproportionately affected by overdose deaths, so Black and Latinx communities in the city. In one year, naloxone from the DOE project was used to reverse around 2,600 overdoses in San Francisco alone. Beyond the individual lives saved, the philosophy of harm reduction that started in San Fran has already started changing how the U.S. treats people who use drugs. How do we make a social net support the people who are more marginalized in San Francisco? Rather than pretend that people are not using drugs, that doesn't work. Every study, every evidence base in a community has shown us over and over again that harm reduction works. So is San Francisco the crime-ridden dystopia that talking heads on TV would have you believe? No, but there are real problems facing the city. Some unique to San Fran, some that the country as a whole is dealing with. Luckily, San Francisco is already laying the groundwork for solutions of the future. With resources, patience, and open-mindedness, San Francisco could once again serve as the nation's model for compassionate and kind care. I have hopes for the city, but I think we have to make those changes. Um, now, and if we want to prevent the increase of crime and more homelessness, more drug use, more death, all the problems that come with these economic disparities. It's a place that has a lot of meaning to people um, and that it's a city and a culture worth saving and preserving. And although there's lots of money to be made, to me that money means nothing if it comes at the expense of the culture and the people that literally built it up and made it what it is.